Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about jigs and everything for jigs. Um, if you did not watch yesterday's video, I uh, talked about, I gave a tip about how to uh, fish a jig, cover water in a pond, um, what type of jig, line, rod, reel, um, and how to fish it to cover water effectively to find big bass in your pond. Um, specifically for bank fishing, uh, pond fishing, um, but it can also work anywhere really that you're at, but it is especially the way that I fish a jig um, and type of jig and all that for pond fishing, beating the bank, you know. Um, but then that led me to thinking that today for Review Wednesday, I'm going to show you all the jigs that I use and give reviews on them, tell you why I use them. And really most of them are one company. So, um, and that's going to be a review on them. So, pretty much the jigs that I use for everything now, every style of jig, comes from one company and that is Outcast Tackle. Every kind of jig that they make. So, But I'm going to go through ones that I specifically use and then there is also another company that I use for one sort of jig. Six cents. There you go. I said that. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So this will be a review on the Outcast Tackle uh, jigs um, because I use them exclusively now and the six cents uh, swim jigs actually uh, because I use those exclusively um, as my swim jigs now so but let's go over all the types of jigs that I like and uh, then we'll and I'll tell you why I like them uh, we'll talk about trailers uh, colors all that stuff and sizes and everything like that so let's start with the flipping jig. Now this is the Seth Fighter cage tungsten flipping jig. <laughs> all right, it's the Seth Fighter tungsten flipping jig. Obviously, with all these jigs, I'm gonna put them in the description, a link um, to Tackle Warehouse, so you can go and um, buy them. Um, but yes, this is the Fighter tungsten flipping jig, and this is like the coolest flipping jig I've ever used. Um, it's just like perfect. I don't exactly know why. The tungsten is obviously awesome. I started just trying to use tungsten jigs um, exclusively now instead of lead um, just because of that sensitivity. Like I said, I like tungsten jigs for that feel of that tungsten. The feel of them are so much better. You can feel every tick against anything um, so much better than a lead um, also tungsten is a lot better for the environment um, and stuff like that but I really like them for the feel um, and like I said outcast tackle set fighter tungsten flipping jig um, it's awesome because it's like kind of a hybrid arky style head it's totally a different head than uh, any other flipping jig I've used, just a little different, um, with the flat spot in there, so when it's on the bottom, it sits up really nice. Um, now, as far as colors on this, I go with two. This is his brown color, brown and black. Um, I don't like the green pumpkin color in this jig, specifically. Um, there are other green pumpkin sort of colors I like, but for some reason, um, I maybe it's because of Fighter, um, that he picked the colors, whatever, um, but I don't like the green pumpkin. It's too bright of a green pumpkin. I don't really like it, um, but this brown and black one is cash money. I love this uh, jig. And then another color, black and blue. Obviously, when the water is very dirty, black and blue. And those are really the only colors I throw 
um, for a flipping jig. And most of the time it's more of a green pumpkin. Um, if the water is really nasty then I will go to a black and blue but even a lot of times then I like to use a green pumpkin. That's just me. Okay. But those are the only two colors you need. Football jig. Now this is um, also a outcast tackle jig. Did I say flipping? Or did I say football? I don't remember. I think I said football. But football jig. This is also an outcast tackle jig. My trailer I put on all wonky. Um, but this is like their green pumpkin something another color. Um, or craw. Some sort of craw. I don't really remember exactly. Sorry. Um, you can see them all. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description. You can check them out. But um, I like this color a lot. It's really just like a green pumpkin. It has a couple, it has some little flash in there. Whatever. Um, this head on this football jig is amazing. Um, it's like perfect. Just with that flat spot. It's super chunky. And then look at that, that line tie embedded in there because a lot of times on football jigs those line ties are what want to weasel you under rocks and cause issues so that's why this thing is awesome for dragging along rocks popping it on rocks and stuff so and it's the same colors i like this one a lot uh, i don't remember exactly what it is you can see it and you can see it on tackle warehouse it's one of the craw colors it's pretty much a green pumpkin brown color stick with that green pumpkin color and then black and blue um so those are the only two colors also i use on a football jig i just always do and that's not ever going to change i forgot to grab um their finesse jig they have a finesse ball head jig i think it's also a seth fighter jig he's like their main pro um for that outcast tackle um, but their finesse, like, ball head jig on a spinning rod, little ball head jig are pretty freaking awesome. And if I'm going light line to a little, those little finesse jigs, um, for smallmouth especially, uh, that's the one that I use. I don't know why I didn't grab one. Now, the one that is not an outcast tackle, uh, jig is the Six Sense Divine Swim Jig. And I just love the detail in this jig and also the fact that if you stop it, it still will sit upright. Unlike a lot of, because uh, you see how it has that flat sort of curve on that head. Um, so if you do stop it, fishing it kind of slow. Really, these swim jigs, you can do anything with. They flip really nice, um, you know, minimal splash um unlike like throwing a football jig or whatever so you can flip them like a nice flipping jig um you can drag them with that head like that but they're really supposed to be a swim jig um but the great thing about them is you can fish them any way you want they also make a hybrid jig which i like those quite a bit as well uh also six cents uh, a hybrid jig that's specifically made for dragging and flipping um, or you can swim it as well um, but these I just like them a lot more um, swim jigs I'm fishing it pretty much like a chatterbait or whatever like it's a chatterbait without a blade to me well really a chatterbait is a swim jig with a blade <laughs> is the way it should be because swim jigs have been around forever um but you get what i'm saying so i'm just slow reeling that a lot popping it things like that it's more of a cover water sort of thing but at the same time with that head uh with that line tie a lot of times they're not as great going through cover or also popping them they don't have the same action as like a a flipping jig um so that's why in yesterday's video i talked about throwing a flipping jig around and fishing it like a 
football jig, a swim jig, and a flipping jig all in one. Um, it's for that head reason because swim jigs, they're great uh, around sticks. They're not great through grass. I don't know. It's because of the pointy head on them and you're just like shooting through that grass. They just want to really kind of snag grass a lot more um, as opposed to a good flipping jig. It's just something about them they do. They just want to hold uh, grass a lot. And that's also another reason why I throw a chatterbait in grass and I throw a swim jig around sticks. Chatterbait, it, it's going to catch every stick in the lake. We all know that. You fish it enough. They just are attracted to that those sticks. Um, but grass, that blade just cuts through the grass. It's awesome. Um, and then vice versa with a swim jig. Swim jig, it will get, it'll bounce over those sticks real well, especially with the stout weed guard on it. Um, but through grass, it just wants to just bury itself in that grass and become a pain in the booty. So, anyway, these are the uh, Six Sense Divine Swim Jigs. And I'll put a link in the description, like I said. The other thing I love about them, the Screw Lock Keeper is always great. I don't, screw lock keepers are kind of a pain in the butt to put them on, um, to screw that bait on there. Um, but, like so I normally like the wire keepers a lot more, but still, screw lock, they're pretty good. They're just more of a pain in the butt to get it on there. But your bait ain't going anywhere. Um, so yeah, as far as colors with a swim jig, now this I vary, um, just sort of like a chatterbait sort of thing or a crankbait. I want to match the bait fish. When I'm fishing a football jig, I want it to look like a crawfish. So that's why I'm doing green pumpkins, I'm doing black and blue. When I'm doing a flipping jig, I want it to kind of look mostly like a crawfish as well, but then maybe some bait fish kind of too, but also green pumpkin black and blue works really good for that. Now this instead, you're covering water, you're making long casts, you're reeling it in. I want it to look like a bait fish um, most of the time. Now you can just throw green pumpkins. I do as well, just throw green pumpkins and all that. Um, if you're imitating bluegill, green pumpkin's a great color. Um, and white is a great color for shad. Um, but like you can go that route or a black and blue swim jig if the water's really dirty you can do that but i kind of like the swim jigs with more pop to them um just gives you that little something extra for that swim jig that might get them to bite a little bit more so that's why i kind of and six cents like i said their stuff is so fancy looking their paint jobs are so great and all that um people love the six cents stuff i'm not a huge six cents fan to be honest um but i get it i mean you know colors uh are what they they buy fishermen whatever how does that saying go the colors buy catch you the colors don't catch the fish right and i've said that millions of times redbeardbassandbaits.com no fancy colors because you don't need them um I'm not trying to catch you. I'm trying to give you real baits that work, that are awesome, and the colors you need. Just saying. Anyway, um, but as far as colors, um, I kind of like to match the bait fish on a swim jig, though. And this is like their bluegill color. Uh, that's just a money one. Instead of throwing a green pumpkin, I'll just kind of get this. This is actually easier to find, too, to be honest. Um, it always seems like these are in stock everywhere, and I don't think it's that big of a difference than just getting a green pumpkin, but you never know. So, anyway, this is the one that I get a lot, or just a standard green pumpkin. So that's if I'm imitating bluegill, faux show. Sure. Um, now let's go to another color that I like. I just got these in, had to buy some more of them, and they just showed up, so that's pretty cool perfect timing um 
Now, as far as shad, this is like their sexy shad color. I always like a little bit of flash for shad stuff. Um, I don't know why. Probably just regular old white would work, but I don't know. It's just that that little flash of that for uh, imitating shad just works, but it's their sexy shad color. Look, their detail and stuff is so great at um, six cents. It really is, but does it really actually catch fish? Probably not, but um, to look at, they're beautiful. Um, but yeah, this is their sexy shad color. All right. Really nice. Um, so those are really the two colors. If I'm imitating bluegill, because I'm imitating bait fish with the swim jig. Same with the chatterbait. I'm imitating bait fish. Let's talk about weights. Half ounce. Done. We're done. No, seriously. Um, half ounce is, you cannot go wrong with just getting a half ounce jig. Okay? I don't care where you're fishing. How shallow you're throwing it. Um, anywhere from six inches of water to 30 feet of water. Like, a half ounce is fine. A half ounce works for all of it. Um, now, granted, with the football jig, when you're just maintaining bottom contact and you're out deep in that 30 feet of water, 20 feet of water, maybe step up to a three-quarter. And that's as heavy as I'll even go. I don't go any heavier than that. Because then it becomes a pain to get that bait to pop up, right? Like you're dragging this in deep water, but still you want to make some pops and do some crazy stuff. It gets you bites. Um, it really does. Instead of just dragging. Um, or you hit cover. A heavier jig is going to weasel itself in rocks a lot more than a lighter jig is. Um, so that's why I still just stick with half ounce most of the time on football jigs are up to a three quarter. I never go heavier than that. Now, flipping jigs, half ounce is just like the way to go. It's all around everything um, that you really need is a half ounce jig. Um, unless if you're trying to get through real heavy grass and things like that, you might want to step up to a three quarter as well. I typically don't. I usually stick with a half ounce. Um, very rarely do I go lower than half ounce. But when I actually do, um, actually, well, hold on. I'll get to that in a second. But when I actually do is with a swim jig. Sometimes a quarter ounce it, on shallower water is just so easier to work with a quarter ounce. Um, but still, I like to stick with the half ounce. Most of the time, I used to use quarters a lot. Um, but half ounce is great. Now, for you guys that don't know how to like flip and pitch and not make a big splash in the water and stuff, number one, practice, practice, practice. Um, but a heavier jig is going to give you a lot more problems. People think, oh, it's, it's heavier, so it's easier to flip. Which, yeah, it probably is, but it's going to make a bigger splash if you don't know how to control your flip to get a nice, smooth barely any splash, you know, um, you know, like a diver, um, a diver, but anyway, so, uh, what I was getting at is half ounce is kind of that perfect size to learn with too, um, to learn how to flip a heavier jig, to learn how to flip and not get that big splash, just practice with the flipping, um, and so half ounce is really the best thing to go with for that. Um, because it'll, it'll teach you. Um, and just practice. Now, alright, oh, and then I keep forgetting the dang finesse jig. Finesse jigs are awesome to throw around when the bite sucks, okay? Like, you're struggling, you think they should be in the, the brush or the weeds or laydowns or whatever, but you're not getting bit. The, that little... Finesse jig, I'm going to show a picture if I can. I probably already did, but I'll show another one. Whatever. That thing just works. You put it on a spinning rod, light line, like 10, 12 pound 
fluorocarbon on a spinning rod and just slowly work that thing um, it's awesome it, it can get bites and that's really when I throw that um, as far as sizes on that I like 1 8 um, or 3 16 at the most I usually kind of stick with a 1 8 sometimes you can throw like a quarter ounce you can go up to a quarter ounce on those um, if it's a if it's deeper because again if you're like it, it's for me I like those little jigs for smallmouth. I don't really throw them too much for largies. Um, I'm throwing them more for smallmouth, sparse cover, deeper water. Um, now, let's go to trailers. And this will pretty much be it. Um, so, trailers. I use now exclusively Redbeard Bass and Baits as trailers. Okay. Um, this one's been on here for a little bit. It's a little tore up, but that is the Chunky Craw, okay? This is the Chunk Craw, Chunky Craw, I call it, and it is made specifically to be on any sort of jig um, to imitate them crawfish, and I talked about this in a video when I went through all the baits. If you have not checked it out, go check out that video and look at all the baits that I make on redbeardbassandbaits.com. Tired of uh, shamelessly plugging myself, but I need to. Um, I mean, it's money. Um, and you guys need to buy them anyway. They're freaking awesome. So, anyway. So, the great thing about these is they're made to stand up. Um, even with a stand-up jig, no matter what jig it is, it could be the most amazing stand-up jig ever. Just like these are. Crawfish style baits from companies, their legs still want to go down. Okay. I want those legs up. So it looks like a defensive craw. A craw on the defensive. Legs up, waiting to just pinch that bass. That is what a crawfish looks like when it's on the bottom and a bass is near it. So, that's what I want it to look like. And that is the reason for that chunky craw. It took me a lot of time to get that thing right and it is amazing to get the style of it right, to get the density of it right, to get everything right, it's perfect. And the size for, you don't really even have to pinch anything off the top to put it on almost any style jig. Um, okay, and there you go. As far as trailer color, green pumpkin, black and blue. And then I also make an awesome color. This is actually, I kind of screwed this one up, but this is, uh, this is a beaver style bait. I didn't grab a craw in this color. Colorado Magic. And it gives it just a little bit extra flash. flash. It's a dark green pumpkin with um, a lot of chartreuse, chartreuse flake in it. Don't look quite like that. I didn't grab any. I don't know. If you want to look at all the baits, go and check out that video. Okay? But those are pretty much what I use for every flipping jig and football jig. Now, um, and finesse jig, actually. This chunk craw on a little finesse jig, you do actually have to pinch off the top a little bit, make it a little smaller. You don't want those legs really far out. This is like, as I want them, I want the head to stop right where that skirt stops and then the legs out there on everything. So, but, um, so you do kind of got to pinch off a little bit for those little finesse jigs, but it's also an amazing trailer for those as well. Um, it's light enough and doesn't interrupt the action of that finesse jig like a lot of big, bulky, flappy trailers do as well. And the stick-up action, that's amazing. Anyway, so I use that, or I use a beaver-style bait. Really, nowadays, I usually just go with that, uh... Chunky crop on my flipping jigs. Uh, every once in a while, if I'm more imitating baitfish, or like I think they're zoning in on baitfish or whatever, um, I'm kind of more into that than I throw on the beaver style bait. But it also still kind of is a crawfish style, so it kind of is a good mix between the two. Um, what these are great for are chatterbait trailers too. But it's also, but it's actually made as a uh, flipping bait, a punching bait. So, anyway, I love these on a swim jig. Put them sideways. Now you 
pinch off a little bit of the top, put them sideways so the tail flaps sideways like a bait fish's tail. This thing is great for that as well as the chatterbaits, like I said. The other trailer that I really like um, are uh, Rage Swimmers from Striking. Those paddle tail swim baits. Uh, smaller size, about the three and three quarter size um, thrown on here. Give it that little paddle tail action on a swim bait or a swim jig. It's awesome. Um, so that's another trailer for these. Now, as far actually, this is will be the last thing, and this video is kind of long. And I hope you guys are really learning something. Um, this is the last thing. As far as trimming your skirts. Your skirts come long out of the package. You know, let's take actually this thing off. I don't know why I didn't take these off. See how long that skirt is? This actually is too, too bad. But you see how long that skirt is? I always trim it to the bottom of the hook. Okay? I want that skirt level with the bottom of that hook on every single jig I use. And, yeah, I just take a pair of scissors and I just clip it. Okay? If it's a little past the hook, that's fine. This is actually, I clipped these not that long ago. Um, a little bit past the hook is fine. No more than half an inch, quarter of an inch maybe. So, you know, but usually you can just stay with the, where that hook, that bottom of that hook when it starts to bend and just cut it straight across there. Good to go. Always trim your skirts. If you do not trim the skirts of your jigs, Whatever trailer you got on there, this skirt is going to just screw around with that action. And that's not doing anyone any favors. So, just trim that skirt up and have, you know, you want the legs of your trailer out past that skirt. So it's not just like this one. See that? See how the skirt ends up here and then you got your legs starting out there. That's not going to screw around with the action of uh, your trailer. So, that's it. Um, as far as, I uh, guess, guess it's not it. I knew this was going to be a pretty long video. But as far as rods, reel, and line, um, flipping jigs and football jigs, I use the same rod. I use a 7 foot 6 heavy with fluorocarbon. Uh, an 8 to 1 gear ratio reel or higher. 7 to 1 you can get away with. Uh, even you can get away with all of them. It's just as far as getting a fish out of cover, as far as flipping, you know, quick pitches, all that. There you go. And then on a football jig you're just doing a lot of dragging until, you know, you got slack line again and you're just reeling back up to tight line. Um, and then also it's deeper water. Get that hook in them. Heavier uh, gear ratio, just winch them to the boat with the jig. That is a great thing with the jig. The bite, number one, is usually awesome. <laughs> it's a huge, which is usually awesome. Awesome. Sometimes I'll just drag it, but um, and then also you can lay the hook into them, these stout hooks, and then you can just muscle them to the boat. Um, so that is flipping jig and uh, football jig. 7.6 heavy, 8 to 1 gear ratio reel, and fluorocarbon. I like to go lighter fluorocarbon, the lightest that I can. 16 pound test is what I really like. I use a Sunline uh, Sniper, uh, and it's just amazing. But real heavy cover uh, for the flipping jig, you might want to step up to 20. I actually really don't see that big of a problem just using the 16. Um, just check your line. Check your line, fool. Um, so, there's that. Um, as far as swim jigs, I actually just use my chatterbait rod, which is a 7 foot 6 medium heavy rod designed specifically for chatterbaits. Really, just any medium heavy rod is fine. Um, and just like a chatterbait, a moving bait with a single hook, I use mono on it because you get a better hook set. I've said this a million times. Um, but I seriously use that rod. Um, or my crankbait rod, which is a 7 foot 6 medium heavy, but it has fluorocarbon on it. 
Um, either way, but I like the mono on it a lot for those better hookups. It's the same as a chatterbait. I said it. All right, moving baits with a single top hook, monofilament. It's so much better. The stretch of that line is going to let them engulf it, get a good hook in them. Okay? Now, so that's what I use for the swim jigs. And then last is that finesse jig, that finesse ball head jig. Um, throwing it on a spinning rod, uh, size, not too much. I always use a 7 foot 1 medium. I, they're just a good, great, all around spinning rod. 7 foot 1 medium. I use the St. Croix Bass X rods. I, they're really nice rods for being pretty inexpensive. Um, 7 foot 1 medium. Medium's all you need on a spinning rod. I don't really ever throw a medium heavy on a spinning rod. So, that, um, just a standard spinning reel. I always use 10 to 15 pound braid as my main line all the time. 10 to 15 pound braid. Um, I usually kind of stick with the 15 more, but sometimes 10. Uh, just whatever they got in stock, let's be honest. A lot of times when I go to the store. Um, but 15 great tins great too braid is so much better on a spinning rod you have no idea if you haven't tried it um but braid as the main line and then just a leader so it's a finesse jig it has a lighter wire hook um if you use a big rod and big line for a little finesse jig you're just going to bend that hook out you're not going to get a great hook set um so that's why you use lighter line a spinning rod um and yeah, and but I still want the line stout enough to be fine with that, uh, with that finesse jig and also around cover and stuff. So, ten pound to twelve pound, ten to twelve. Um, that's it. I usually just stick with ten. So, um, a leader. I tie about a three foot leader all the time, and uh, don't change it until it's down to about a foot and a half. You know, if I'm still cutting it all the time. So. Um, three foot leader tie that sucker on i have a video on knots go check that out you'll learn all that uh how to tie your leader and main line together and uh that's it really long i try to go fast uh i hope it helped for everyone i don't care if you're new if you're old if you're whatever just fishing jigs because they're awesome and big bass love big jigs anyway our big bass love jigs not big jigs big jigs too, but whatever. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow.